the second largest prescription drug company in the United States, paves the way for children five and older to need their vaccination shots just in time for holiday travel. A major U.S. cruise line hits a giant milestone in their return to service. We reveal the top four most popular cruise destinations worldwide. Cruise ships continue to leave China as the cruise industry remains shut down. And we touch on some vaccination policies across the major U.S. cruise lines. All that coming up on Midships. Welcome to the Midships YouTube channel. I'm your Captain Corey, and today we might have to talk about one of the largest stories we've discussed on this channel so far. But before we get started, I want to remind you that our giveaway is currently going on. If you'd like your chance to be entered to win this eight pack of seasickness anti-nausea wristbands and this cruise line approved power extender, all you have to do is follow the link in the description below. If you're on a mobile device, I'll pin it in this upper right hand corner. Now, if you didn't win our past giveaways or you just can't wait to get your hands on some totally awesome cruise swag, there are Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Simply clicking on the links does in fact help the channel, plus you might find some totally awesome cruise swag and customize it in the color of your liking. Now before we get into our top story, we're going to cover something a little bit more lighthearted and fun, and that's going to be reporting on the top international cruise destinations in the world. And this is for cruisers who do not live in the United States. I thought it'd be really interesting to see where the midships family from around the world enjoy spending their cruise dollars. From worldofcruising.co.uk by Harriet Mallinson, most popular international cruise destination in the world is revealed. The most popular cruise holiday destination for UK travelers has been revealed in recent research, and it may surprise you. The United States was shown to be the cruise destination Britons are most eager to sail to. The finding was unveiled by cruise specialist cruise.co.uk based on bookings taken during the past six months. America has always been hugely popular with UK cruise guests, both as a holiday hotspot in itself and as the getaway to the Caribbean. Its position has recently been bolstered, with bookings growing by an astonishing 12% compared to pre-pandemic levels. The research comes as America relaxes its travel restrictions and announces it will open up to vaccinated UK travelers from November 2021 and beyond, in a huge boost to the travel industry. The second most popular cruise destination was revealed to be the Mediterranean, and in third place is the Caribbean. The region was also found to be on the wish list of many in the UK, according to a survey carried out by Royal Caribbean over the summer. Meanwhile, Canada was shown to be the fourth most popular cruise destination. The research also examined how people are holidaying and how long they're going away for, as well as what time of year they travel. It noted there's been an increase in the length of time that people are booking their cruises while overseas. What's more, a greater number of holidayers are taking no-flight cruises. The percentage of travelers booking their sailing directly in the UK to their overseas destination has increased from 27 up to 37 percent. As for the time of year travelers are most likely to cruise, the start of the year remains the most favorite, with January and February being the most popular months for Britons to take their holidays and travel aboard an international cruise. So to all of our midships friends and family sailing out of the UK, we welcome you all over here to the land of the free. And if you ever stop by Port Canaveral, why don't you drop me a message on my midships Facebook group at facebook.com forward slash midships. I always love hearing from the midships family that comes traveling through the area. Now, the second largest drug provider in the United States has recently come out with an announcement regarding vaccinations for children as young as five years old. And this could very much impact cruise plans for families later this year. In an article from thepointsguy.com by Caroline Tanner, will young kids be vaccinated in time for holiday travel? Here's what we know so far. Pfizer announced today that they would soon seek authorization for their COVID-19 vaccine for children ages five up to 11 that might result in kids being able to get at least one dose of their vaccine in time for holiday travel. Following the release of positive clinical results from a COVID-19 vaccine trial in children aged five to 11, showing that the vaccine was safe, well-tolerated and robust in neutralizing antibody responses, 
Pfizer said it plans to submit such data to the U.S. FDA and European Medicines Agency in hopes the agencies will authorize the use of the Pfizer vaccines in both the United States and European Union. The FDA approved the Pfizer vaccine for individuals 16 and older in August, which remains under emergency use authorization for children 12 to 15 years. And this is the tweet from Pfizer. They just sent it out earlier today, announcing this new trial for children age five to 11. If you'd like to see the tweet, this article, along with all the articles referenced in today's Midships episode are linked in the description below. While you're down there, why not give this video a huge thumbs up if you think that every cruiser needs to know this type of information. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the Midships channel, what are you waiting for? We have a goal to have 3,000 subscribers by the end of September when I set sail aboard the MSC Divina. We are so darn close to meeting that goal. If just 50 of you hit the subscribe button right now, we would actually meet the goal over a week early. Also, I've received some messages recently just like this one from people in the midships family who told me that YouTube is not notifying them when I put out new videos. What you need to do is make sure you look below this video and be sure that you are not only subscribed but the bell notification is turned on and there should be two little white swoosh marks outside of that bell. As long as that is turned on, you should be receiving notifications every time I drop a new episode. If you're not, you might try unsubscribing and resubscribing and then liking this episode. That may refresh the YouTube algorithm for you. So back to the article. On September 10th, FDA chief Dr. Peter Marks said the agency would review the data to determine its safety and effectiveness in a matter of weeks, and that he was very, very hopeful that vaccinations for this age group will be underway by year's end. And this is according to the Associated Press. For children under five, Pfizer says it expects to issue clinical trial results for the six months to two years and two year to five year old age groups as soon as the end of this year, meaning the vaccine could be authorized for use for every age group by early 2020. The updated timeline certainly helps with the start of this fall school year, which the Associated Press notes has been marked by a huge jump in pediatric infections caused by the extra contagious Delta variant. And it may get a lot easier for families with young flyers to safely travel this holiday season. Pfizer's data submission and FDA approval for the five to 11 year old age group would hopefully allow the first dose to be administered by as soon as October or early November of this year. Depending on production, availability, and parents' willingness, it is feasible to think that by Christmas, kids in that age group can be fully protected. So what this all means to cruisers, especially cruisers with children, is that it's very likely that the vaccine mandates that cruise lines require for those 12 and older are going to be coming to this second group of children between ages 5 to 11 sometime in that January to April time frame of next year, if I had to just spitball it. So you need to be very much aware that this is coming down the pipeline. It's a great time to go ahead and get your travel insurance lined up for your trip. Also to make sure that it covers your flights and your hotel expenses if you're going to choose to not go down the vaccine route for your children. However, the upside to this is as the populations on board cruise ships become more and more vaccinated, hopefully the masks can soon be removed completely and those become a thing of the past on cruises. I know wearing a mask outside on your vacation in 90 degree plus sunny weather is definitely not what most of us consider a relaxing day at sea. So what do you guys think about this? I'm sure there are as many opinions as there are people watching this video. I'd love to hear your opinion down below. But of course, in the midships family, we are respectful and we are appreciative of other people's opinions. So go ahead and keep it PG down there. But I would really encourage a wonderful discussion down in the comment section on this. I think it's a very interesting topic and there's gonna be a lot of push and pull going on for this one. And as usual, I'm just gonna sit up here on the Lido deck and watch it all go down in the comment section. One of the largest cruise lines in the United States has half of its fleet officially back in service. Let's go ahead and learn a little bit more now from cruiseindustrynews.com. Half of Carnival Cruise Line's U.S. fleet is back in action. With the Carnival Dream and Carnival Glory resuming guest operations September 19th, Carnival Cruise Line now has 11 ships, representing half of its U.S.-based fleet sailing once again, according to a press release from the Miami-based cruise line. Beginning with its return to guest operations back on July 3rd with the Carnival Vista, the line is operating from seven U.S. home ports to include Miami, Galveston, Seattle, Port Canaveral, Long Beach, Baltimore, and New Orleans. And we have a quote from the president of Carnival Cruise Lines, Christine Duffy. 
having half of our U.S. fleet back in operations provides positive economic impact in our home ports and port of call destinations, along with giving our guests their much needed vacations and helping our crews support their families back home. We couldn't have accomplished this without the support of our travel advisor partners, business partners, and port and destination partners as well. The Carnival Dream became the third Carnival ship to operate year-round from Galveston when it departed this weekend on a six-day Caribbean cruise, while the Carnival Glory is the first ship to set sail from the port of New Orleans, operating a seven-day voyage to the Bahamas. And we reported yesterday that it's been officially 18 months since any other ships had sailed from the port of New Orleans. So it's great to see activity going on down there once again. Carnival said additional vessels will resume service throughout the fall and into early 2022 as the line's successful restart of operations continues. And of course, we're still awaiting word that the Carnival Liberty, which is currently dry docked, has finished its exterior paint job and hotel upgrades. Can't wait to see the paint job on my favorite Carnival cruise ship. So when you hear the word cruising, Mississippi doesn't often come to mind. But today we have a story that may change that. From WQAD AVC8, there's a new riverboat on the Mississippi River, written by Jenna Webster. The American Melody on Sunday docked at River Heritage Park in Davenport for its inaugural cruise up the Mississippi River. The ship is part of American Cruise Line's new Modern Series, Right now, it's sailing a 22-day long cruise, the longest cruise on the Mississippi. Guests were supposed to embark in New Orleans, but due to Hurricane Ida, it was switched to Natchez, Mississippi. Its final destination is St. Paul, Minnesota. American Melody accommodated 175 passengers. Guests received a warm welcome in the city of Davenport by the mayor accompanied by a band and the captain was given the key to the city. Former Davenport mayor and now director of city partnerships for American Cruise Lines, Frank Klipsch, said the cruise line is building five modern riverboats over the next five years. American Melody is the cruise line's second new modern riverboat just this year, and its fourth riverboat in the Mississippi fleet. And I thought, why not show you a full list of this itinerary? I think this is an absolutely awesome way to see sort of the heartland of the United States and really get that huge change of scenery from the north to the south. So let's go ahead and take a look at the American Melody 22-day itinerary. And here it is. You can see there are 21 stops in 22 days. You begin way down here in the south in New Orleans and head all the way up north through Arkansas, Tennessee, Missouri, Illinois, Iowa, Wisconsin, and you finish up up here in St. Paul, Minnesota. So that's kind of an awesome place to finish because I'm not sure if a lot of you are familiar with St. Paul, but that is a huge regional airport. Very easy to get airfare in and out of the region. So overall, this looks like an awesome cruise. American Cruise Lines looks like something that midships may have to look into going forward. The cruise industry is still shut down in China and cruise ships are bailing left and right. Just this week, we heard Wonder of the Seas is no longer going to set sail on her inaugural voyage over in Asia, and instead she'll now be beginning her cruising career in South Florida. Let's take a look at another cruise line pulling ships out of the region. From CruiseIndustryNews.com, Costa leaves China with another cruise ship bound for Europe. Costa Cruise Lines has announced their cruise ship Venezia will move out of China. The line also announced that the Costa Toscana will enter service in the Mediterranean starting next March. We have a quote from the cruise line. Waiting for the return of cruises to Asia, we've decided to bring the Costa Venezia back to the Mediterranean to offer a truly unique, never-before-seen cruise program that will only be available aboard Costa. In line with our plan to gradually resume operations, we have also decided to move the entry into service of our new flagship, Costa Toscano, until March of 2022. So this is what happens when restrictions become inflexible. Cruise lines will take their ships and go somewhere else that will work with them. And our last little bit of information for you today comes from cruiseindustrynews.com. And it's a great concise little article that gives you all the key bullet points for vaccination policies across all the major cruise line brands. And this is the article here. This will be linked in the description below. This covers cruise lines like Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Norwegian, MSC and Princess, Celebrity Cruises, and Holland America Lines. If you'd like to take a look at the article, it's of course down there in the description below. While you're down there, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Give us a big thumbs up for this video. Also be sure you're entered for the cruise swag giveaway. The winner will be drawn 
Wednesday the 22nd at noon Eastern, so you only have two days left to enter. Thanks so much for stopping by the midships today. We hope to see you again tomorrow. And until next time, we'll see you on the midships.